I want to show you what is basically a beer magic trick. I'm going to take this beer, uh, Munich Hellers, that was carbonated with CO2, and I'm going to turn it into a nitro pour. And the trick is, I'm going to do it without any nitro canisters. So I've got an air compressor, a nitro brew box, and then this jug. And that is the nitro cascade effect. Yeah, I have made a CO2 beer into a nitro pour. So question is, where did the nitro come from? Well, before we get to that, I've got Norm coming over, so I need to find some other drinks to, uh, to nitrate. Norm, are you a fan of nitro drinks? Love nitro and beer. Haven't nitroed much of anything else. Well, maybe now is the time. We, we certainly seem to have the gear for it. Yeah, so what we do have, this thing is called Nitro Brew. It's basically just an air compressor. You put the compressed air through this plunger here into this, you give it a shake, and then you pour it out. Where does the nitrogen come from? It's not coming from a nitrogen tank. <laughs> I'm guessing it's being filtered out of the air? That's right. Our air is mostly nitrogen, the, so that makes sense. The air is mostly nitrogen. This mm -hmm. is crazy. So. Yeah, my sixth grade chemistry class is paying off right now. There we go. It's yeah. like 80% of the air right. is actually nitrogen rather than oxygen. So right. it's literally just using the nitrogen in the air. That's, that's kind of amazing though. So I made some cold brew coffee. Mm -hmm. One thing to keep in mind when using this is the beverage needs to be cold. I mean, just like when you make beer, and then you force carbonate it, it needs to be cold first. Right. Um, that way it's going to be more soluble into the drink. So we'll do 16 ounces of coffee. Now, lid goes on like that. Uh huh. And then this is going to add in the compressed air. So it's just pulling the air in. Sure. And charge this to around 40 psi. So you just okay. push in this plunger. Uh huh. Now you just. Give it a shake. Right. Yeah, and that's essentially just infusing the nitrogen in the in the beer, similar to the way that the widget does inside of a Guinness. Exactly. Yeah. Because this is metal, it's just filled. I mean, it's super cold. Oh, wow, it is. So really chilly. I think helps. Okay, so give me a glass and let's see if this has worked. It's beginning to yeah. set up. You can already see it separating at the bottom. You see the cascade? Yeah, yeah. I am, I am, uh, I am really curious to see what this tastes like because uh, I, I don't drink a lot of nitro coffee. I drink, I'm a coffee drinker, but not the nitro, the cold brew stuff. Let's give this a How try. good it smells. Mm. Oh, that's that's really great. No, you get, you're definitely getting like that sort of creamy, smooth, oh, yeah. smooth mouthfeel. Yeah, but no bitterness at all. Mm. None. Mm. It makes a difference. I think. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever in your life? tried nitrogen iced tea. No, absolutely not. In fact, I've never even heard of nitrogen iced tea. Tell you what, do you want to do the honors this time? Sure. Insert the nozzle okay. into that. Yep. And then just push them up to let the... All right. So, so there goes in like that. That's it. You know that it's charged because mm -hmm. now it sort of rocks on the table. Right. So now we just give it a swirl give it and a, a shake? Give it a shake. Okay. Uh, recommendation is not to hold the handle. Okay. But just hold the base and then, yeah. It's getting pretty cold. Give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. okay. Oh my. Shot up pretty fast. Now that doesn't look as nitrogenated as the coffee. Well, I mean, if we look at the difference, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's there's a world. Of, I mean, you can tell that it's definitely in there. Not as discernible a difference. No. With I, the tea. I think we need more shaking. There we go. 
That's, uh, yeah, that, that looks like it, um, it's a different treatment. Yeah, and now you can see the, the cascade right. is starting to form. Yeah. yeah. It's like sipping on tea flavored air. If I was a tea drinker, um, I would prefer to drink it this way. Mm. All right, look, we've done coffee. We have. We've done tea. Yep. Should we do some beer? That's what I really came here for, was the beer. Brian sent me this from Short Circuited Brewers. It's a chocolate coffee imperial stout. So Brian, thank you. Now what makes this a little different is compared to the coffee and the tea, mm -hmm. this is already carbonated. Sure. So we're going to be kind of shaking out the CO2 okay. from the beer and replacing it with nitrogen. Oh, right. So we're going to flatten the beer mm -hmm. and then infuse the beer. That's right. Very cool. Now, actually, this brings me on to a, a point mm -hmm. that uh, I was concerned about initially, which was, aren't we just oxidizing the beer by doing this? Which is the last thing you want to do with the beer. Yeah. Well, I mean, we definitely are oxidizing it. Right. Because when we put the compressed air in, uh -huh. although most of it's nitrogen, there is still oxygen. Oh, right? I see. But at the same time, we're drinking it right now, as mm -hmm. opposed to letting the oxygen sit in the beer for like days and then it would start to spoil. Right, right. So I think that's what makes it okay, is that the oxygen does not have time to do its sort of thing where it makes stuff taste like cardboard. Right, right. But yeah, I think you're right. I think that requires a good bit of time for that oxidation chemistry to work. Yeah, I mean, if you think when you pour a beer into a glass, mm -hmm. you're oxidizing it then as well, right? Of course. So, okay, so I have given this a few shakes. Oh, oh, that looks gorgeous. Wow. Both of them just cascading like crazy. That is a thing of beauty. It is. It's gorgeous. And that's going to take a while to set up. So uh, not really something that we can sip right away. We're going to have to let that set up before we take a sip. I normally have to go out and buy nitrogen, put it in a canister, right. serve it under pressure, right. put it through a special faucet and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean. And it looks exactly, it comes out looking like that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, look at that. It's got, it's still got that much to set up. Yeah. Before you really have the beer. Again, the head on this beer. Yeah. You know, that creamy, foamy head. Should we give this a go? You, do you think it's time? Yeah. Okay. The taste is fabulous. I mean, it's really amazing. When I put a beer on nitrogen, I have to decide right up front, is this going to be a nitro port or is it going to be a CO2 port? Right. Right? But now I can take any beer that's already fully carbonated mm -hmm. with CO2 right. and then see what it tastes like on nitrogen as well. Right. So that's, to me, that's the big advantage is I think going forward, every beer that I have now, I'll probably try it on nitro. <laughs> and Why wouldn't you? Yeah, right? Yeah, Just absolutely. See, see which ones work best. I think all our tasting sessions now need to have two versions of the beer, right? <laughs> I'm up for that. <laughs> I, I, I am fully committed to, uh, to doing that if needed. I appreciate your service. For the art. Absolutely. Cheers, Martin. Cheers.